Ben Huntley, NBC News, New York. And David Brinkley, NBC News, Cape Kennedy. Here on the Apollo 11 launch pad, everything is fine. The countdown is on schedule or ahead of it. There are no mechanical troubles. And while nobody we know of has the shakes as yet, everybody is finding it hard to contain himself until tomorrow morning when it all begins to happen. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are cool and contained, saying, yes, they do know what it is to be scared, but they're not, because they know what the dangers are. They know that everything that can be done to get them to the moon safely and back has been done, and they believe what they're doing is worth the danger. As astronaut James McDivitt put it to us today, we very seldom see history made, but we'll see it tomorrow. This time, almost everybody in the world will be able to see it. Everyone in reach of television. The walk on the moon probably will be seen by more people around the world than have ever seen anything. This is the firing room at Cape Kennedy, as cool and quiet as if all those computers were figuring out a factory payroll. The countdown so far has ha hardly had a delay at all. Today, the 40-foot, 40-story gantry or service tower moved away, leaving the rockets standing there, gleaming white, all but the American flags on the sides. On top of it is a completely separate little rocket to fly the astronauts off of it and away in case of any trouble. In the white room, they're still working. It is so-called because it is clean, free of dust that might contaminate some of the delicate electronic and mechanical machinery. It is almost impossible, even looking down the whole length of it, to visualize how big it is. Even when you stand here on the ground and look at it, you can't, because it stands out in the middle of nothing, and there is no point of reference, nothing to compare it to. But it is enormous. carefully planned, meticulously engineered trip anywhere in the history of the world. In fact, probably the most carefully engineered anything in the history of the world. And this whole area down here in the Florida flats is busy, keyed up, crowded, hopeful, slightly fearful, overworked, and excited at something people find hard to believe, even when they know it's true. Jen? President Nixon and Republican... Beach next door here to Cape Kennedy is filling up with VIPs and MIPs, very important people and moderately important people. Spiro Agnew, Lyndon Johnson, 69 ambassadors, 100 foreign embassy science attaches, 19 governors, 40 mayors, and 275 people named on NASA's list of important visitors. Also, the Chamber of Commerce figures, as Chambers of Commerce always do, that about a million other people will be around here tomorrow morning, choking up the highways and lining the beaches, waiting for something to tell their grandchildren about. The beaches on the ocean fronts here are wide, handsome, and on those close to the launch site, people are out there in tents, sleeping bags, campers, and trailers. They're building fires at night and cooking hot dogs, playing guitars, transistor radios, and drinking a little beer. A liquor store on the beach nearby reported happily that it was selling 150 cases a day. Nobody knows how many people are here, nor how many will be here tomorrow morning, and no one ever will know because there's no way to count them. A lot of those who own boats have anchored them in creeks and rivers nearby, including one called Mosquito Lagoon, not without reason, and are living on the water like Chinese refugees, waiting for 9.32 a.m. So the crowd will range from Spiro Agnew and Lyndon Johnson arriving in government jet airplanes to parents and their children out on the beach in sleeping bags eating canned beef stew. There's even a marathon runner here from Tasmania, he didn't run here from Tasmania, he ran here from Houston, Texas, to Cocoa Beach, arriving at a motel, out of breath. We don't know if they, if they had a room for him, but he did take his shoes off and drink a glass of water. Tomorrow morning at 9.32 is the time, the time when they leave to take a walk 
on the moon. It is impossible to believe it, but it's true. Good night, Chet. Good night, David, and good night for NBC News. By jet plane, automobile, helicopter, and mule train, the curious and the concerned, thousands of them, are converging on Cape Kennedy tonight, all waiting to see man's newest form of transportation begin man's most momentous journey tomorrow morning. I'll admit that's quite a mouthful. But after all, they are going to the moon. And the people in charge of the Apollo 11 mission report that everything is ready for the scheduled liftoff at 9.32 Eastern Time tomorrow morning. Here's a report from Cape Kennedy from Jules Bergman. The mobile service tower has now rolled back and Apollo 11 stands alone, poised for the final hours of the countdown. Astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Cullen spent a relaxed day today in their crew quarters, reviewing their flight plan one final time and they'll go to bed early tonight. The calm, steady pace of the countdown contrasts starkly with the almost unbelievable spectacle surrounding the Cape. A million or more sightseers are expected to eyewitness this historic moment when man casts off his earthly shackles. The deluge of VIPs has already begun. Former President Johnson arrived at Patrick Air Force Base this morning. He'll be among some 2,500 VIPs led by Vice President Agnew who are expected to witness the liftoff. All in all, 8,000 invited guests will be here. Every member of Congress, together with one guest and the entire diplomatic corps, have received invitations. NASA is picking up the tab for the Washington to Cape Kennedy round-trip flight. The crunch is being felt everywhere. Roads, motels, parks, and restaurants are all jammed. Route A1A, the only road to the Cape, now combines all the worst elements of a Los Angeles freeway with those of a mid-Manhattan traffic jam. Not a motel room is to be had from here to Jacksonville, a distance of 175 miles. And the rates in Cocoa Beach have skyrocketed to $65 a night. The pandemonium and circus atmosphere outside the Cape can be compared with the relaxed, we're ready, so let's do it attitude of the three pilots. All three are so different, so non-typical American boy, that they completely shatter the Hollywood image of the typical astronaut. Spacecraft Commander Neil Armstrong, 39 next month, a veteran space agency research pilot who's flown everything from jet fighters to the X-15 research plane right down to gliders just for fun. The joy of flying a machine, making it do what it should do, gives him all the satisfaction he needs. Yeah. Lunar module pilot Buzz Aldrin is the unique personality aboard Apollo 11. His five and a half hour spacewalk on Gemini 12, where he psyched out the problems and rested when he had to, made him the ideal choice to walk on the moon with Armstrong. Command module pilot Mike Collins, like Aldrin, an Air Force colonel, is the easiest going of the three. He has a reputation as a professional par excellence, who takes the training, doesn't squawk, and is ready when you are. Three, three unique individuals. There are no common men who can take both the stress and the training drudgery of getting ready to go to the moon. Early tomorrow, all three get aboard Apollo 11 to begin this monumental exploration and open a new chapter in man's history. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News at Cape Kennedy. The Reverend Ralph David Abernathy, who was leading a miniature Poor People's March at Cape Kennedy, visited the Space Center today and said, what we can do for space and exploration, we demand that we do for starving people. And at a luncheon after he arrived at Cape Kennedy today, former President Johnson said, if we can lead the world to the moon, we can lead them to peace and bountiful prosperity here at home. 